Project Kanakan was part of a series of nuclear tests aimed at testing the effects of underground nuclear detonations that dated back to the early 1960s. This top-secret American operation aimed to test the powerful LIM-49 Spartan anti-ballistic missile. Previous detonations had taken place at Amchitka Island in Alaska, but none would be as destructive as the Kanakan nuclear explosion. On November 6, 1971, one of the world's most powerful nuclear warheads was placed in a hole some 6,000 feet below the ground. The island had been evacuated, and while the project's personnel impatiently waited for President Richard Nixon's approval, a small group of civilians headed towards the island in a heroic attempt to stop the proceedings. However, it was too late. The Aleutian Islands. Amchitka is the southernmost link of the Aleutian Island chain and extends from the Bering Sea in North America to the Russian coast. The native Aleut population that once roamed this island made contact with Russian fur traders during the 1760s and was slowly banished less than a century later. Many fell to diseases, while others were displaced to work at colonies established by Russian and American colonizers. Then, during the gold rush that swept through Alaska, U.S. President William Howard Taft signed an executive order that set aside the entire Aleutian Islands as a wildlife reservation. Nevertheless, the executive order left loopholes for economic and military exploitation. Following the Japanese bombing raids of Dutch Harbor and the subsequent occupation of the islands of Atu and Kiska, the U.S. Army moved into Amchitka in 1942 to establish forward positions and repulse the Japanese if they decided to engage once more. The military then built a landing strip and a dock, with over 16,000 servicemen relocated to the island until the end of the war. The island of Amchitka was briefly allowed to rest for wildlife conservation once the military abandoned the outposts. However, in 1950, amid the Cold War and the outbreak of hostilities in the Korean Peninsula, the American Atomic Energy Commission began to consider the island as the possible testing ground for future nuclear ordnance. Nuclear Tests The ongoing arms race between the Soviet Union and the United States led to the rapid development of powerful nuclear devices that were up to five times more powerful than the atomic detonations of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Both nations conducted several secret nuclear tests that increased in power with each new prototype, and scientists realized that adequate seismological knowledge was critical for detecting Soviet nuclear explosions. Several nuclear bombs were then detonated in the Nevada desert to study seismic signals as part of Operation Plum Bomb in 1957. However, the results were disappointing, and in 1959, Dr. James R. Killian formed the Panel in Seismic Improvement, intending to improve the development and deployment of seismic instruments and study the seismic effects of nuclear explosions. This led to the establishment of the Vela Program, or Vela Uniform, a joint project between the Department of Energy, the Atomic Energy Commission, and the Advanced Research Projects Agency. The Vela Uniform would conduct seven underground nuclear tests in the continental U.S. and Alaska between 1963 and 1971 to study seismic traces with high explosive ordnance, and Amchitka was one of the locations. Amchitka Detonations Amchitka was occupied by the Department of Defense in early 1960, and hundreds of scientists from numerous laboratories and atomic commissions set up infrastructure to measure the nuclear weapons that would be detonated. The Atomic Commission announced that the goal was, quote, to determine the behavior and characteristics of seismic signals generated by nuclear detonations, and to differentiate them from seismic signals generated by naturally occurring earthquakes. Then, on October 29, 1965, the long-shot nuclear bomb was detonated below the ground on Amchitka's surface. The bomb yielded 80 kilotons, and although the surface did not collapse, krypton and tritium were later found near the area. As civilian unrest grew with the Vietnam War, protesters began to protest the war and the ongoing nuclear tests. Still, President Richard Nixon approved the detonation of another bomb as part of Test Milro. 
According to a documentary from the Department of Defense, Melrose's purpose was to, quote, test an island, not a weapon. The bomb was detonated on October 2nd, 1969, and had a yield of 1.2 megatons. Footage from the time shows how engineers drilled a 4,000-foot shaft into Amjitka's surface to lower the bomb and detonate it from below. Melrose shockwave reached the island's surface with an acceleration of 340 square meters per second, and footage taken by the Department of Defense shows how it created a dome on the island of approximately two miles in radius, with a height of about 16 feet. Additionally, the DoD films show how the blast, quote, turned the surrounding sea to froth and forced geysers of mud and water 50 feet into the air. Despite the damage from Milrow, it would prove nothing more than a mere warm-up for what was to come. Project Kanakin. Following the Milrow test, environmental activists formed a committee in Vancouver to put an end to the nuclear tests in the Aleutians. Besides the fear of environmental contamination, they believed further tests would cause earthquakes and tsunamis. This committee eventually led to the creation of the Greenpeace Organization. Still, the DoD and the Atomic Energy Commission decided to carry on with Project Kanakin as part of the Vela Uniform. This project's objective was to test the design of the LIM-49 Spartan Anti-Ballistic Missile, or ABM, interceptor. The missile carried a W-71 warhead, a high-yield warhead that produced huge amounts of X-rays, debris, and fission output to prevent the blackout of ABM radar systems. Footage from the Department of Energy Nevada Operations Office shows how over 400 tons of equipment had to be placed in a shaft that was over 6,200 feet deep and over 90 inches wide. In addition, engineers used a new alignment laser to make a deep hole into the island's rock. The video then shows how the engineers lowered the gigantic Spartan missile with its 5 megaton warhead into a vast chamber located at the bottom of the shaft. Following the Spartan missile, the engineers lower a 264-foot-long instrumentation package linked to a fleet of truck trailers stationed half a mile away. All of the surrounding test support equipment was specifically designed to survive a ground upheaval of around 15 feet, including the test electronics and the field recording computer. While the DoD and the AEC prepared the nuclear detonation, the Greenpeace activists, who had taken to the sea in an effort to stop the test, had to abandon their mission after winds that topped 125 miles an hour forced them back. With nothing to hold him back, President Nixon finally gave the green light for the missile's detonation on November 6, 1971. Underground Explosion Project Kanakin became the largest underground nuclear test ever conducted by the U.S. It was so powerful that it comprised over 14% of the total yield generated by all 730 underground tests that had been undertaken by the country. The blast registered a seismic shock of 7 on the Richter scale and left a crater over 60 feet deep and 1 mile wide. The crater was quickly filled with water and became the largest lake on the island. Footage taken from a helicopter captured the scale of destruction as lakes, ponds, soil, and infrastructure soared into the air up to 15 feet, while seabirds, thousands of sea otters, over 10,000 sticklebacks, 700 Dolly Varden, and hundreds of Harlequin ducks did not survive the shockwave. Following the Kanakin detonation, Amchitka was never used again by the U.S., and a 1996 test from Greenpeace found that there were traces of plutonium, americium, and other chemicals on the island. To this day, the island has not recovered from the effects of the nuclear detonation, and the footage clearly shows how the island's landscape was forever changed. Still, the test was considered a resounding success, as scientists were able to gather plenty of information from the warhead's performance and found that the blast had no radioactivity at all. Years later, the U.S. would continue performing nuclear tests at the Nevada test site by using the intelligence gathered from the Kanakin explosion. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos.
Also, let us know what you think of Project Kanakin and the detonation of the largest underground nuclear test conducted on American soil. And stay tuned for more. <laughs>